if you remember, when you're long when you're doing long division, you see how many can go into this. So how many fours can go into 22? The answer to that is there's five. Five times four is 20. Thus you get the five there. So you subtract and get the two. So and then you drop down your seven, and you get 27. Everybody remember doing that? So, from there, you see how many fours go into 27. How many? Six. So, six times four is 24. You subtract here, you get three. And then you drop down your one and get 31. See, I even tried to make it predictable. What comes next? Seven. Because seven times four is 28, and you can't go more than that. Which gives you three. Drop your two down again, which gives you two. 32 times four is, or four times eight is 32. And you get a zero here for your remainder. Does everybody remember doing that way back in the day? Way back in the day. Okay. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to do long division with polynomials. I had two to show you, and then you will try one on your own. So example number two is going to look like this x to the third minus 4x squared plus 6x minus 4. We're going to divide that by x minus 2. So, again, I showed you synthetic division first because it's the easier of the two. But synthetic division doesn't always work. Um, so that's why we have to know how to do long division. Okay? I know that's really frustrating, but that's just how it goes sometimes. Okay. So here's what ends up happening. Um, we do x minus 2 on the outside here. And we get x to the third minus x squared plus 6x minus 4 all on the inside. So again, I need you to concentrate and not interrupt. And then we should be able to get through this okay. If you, need, if you have a question, please just raise your hand. So, what we get here, I need to ask myself, what times this thing out front gives me this right here? So, what times x gives you x to the third power? x squared. I am not really that concerned about this 2 right here. Okay? Only really care about the x. Okay? So, get that in your head x squared times x is how much? x to the third, just like we wanted it to be. x squared times negative 2 is negative 2x squared. Does that make sense? So it's kind of like the distributive property. x squared times the first, x squared times the second thing. All right? Then we subtract here, and we get x, square, x to the third minus x to the third is 0. Negative 4 times negative 2 is still negative 2, x squared. And then just like you used to, you drop down the positive 6x. Okay? Everybody with me so far? Not that bad, right? Okay. Now that I have my negative 2x squared, I need to ask myself, what times x, which is the number, again, the thing out front, what times the thing out front gives me negative 2x? 
Okay, so we're looking at this spot right here now. How do I get negative 2? It's negative 4 minus negative 2 is negative 2. Okay, so again, I'm looking at this spot right here. Now I want my thing out front to match it again. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to subtract by 2x. Does everybody agree with that? Because a negative 2x times positive x gives you negative 2x squared. So we get negative 2 times positive x gives you negative 2x squared. Then you get negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4x. Okay? What do I do after that? I subtract. So when I subtract, this stuff is 0. This stuff is 2x. Everybody agree with that? I haven't, um, I skipped one part that I want you to notice. What did I just skip doing? Yeah. Uh, no. Has to do with the arrow I drew. What have I not done yet? I have not yet dropped down the negative 4. Okay. So now I have 2x minus 4. So now I have to ask myself, what times x gives me positive 2x? What? 2. And a positive 2. So then I have 2x. 2 times x gives you 2x. 2 times negative 2 gives you negative 4 with a remainder of 0. So my answer here is x squared minus 2x plus 2. So, a little bit on the complicated side, right? Synthetic division is a little bit easier, right? But again, synthetic division does not always work, which is the frustrating part. Okay? So, let me show you another one that's a little bit shorter. I just wanted you to see a longer one at first, just to see how the process kind of gets moving. So, our fifth one is going to look like this. Oh, yeah, sorry. In my notes, it's the fifth one. Don't really want to explain why. A squared minus 5A plus 3. And I'm going to divide that by 2 minus A to the negative 1. Okay. Okay. Remember, why am I not multiplying these? because of that exponent of negative 1. So this really looks like this. a squared minus 5a plus 3 over 2 minus a. Do I want to write it as 2 minus a? Yeah. The, well, no. I don't want to write it like that either. Is negative a plus 2. Remember, because the A is what's negative. Okay? Yeah, the letter always needs to go first. And it, in particular, the highest variable. Okay? All right, so let's do this one. This one's not nearly as bad. A squared minus 5A plus 3. I'm going to divide that by negative A plus 2. So what times what times negative a gives you positive a squared? Negative a. So negative a times negative a is positive a squared. Negative a times two is negative two a. So 
So I'll stop and let you all catch up for a second. Again, I'm going to subtract there. So from there, all I do, negative 5 minus negative 2 is negative 3a. And then I'm going to drop down this 3. Right? Okay. And then lastly, what times negative a times, oops, I'm sorry. What times negative a gives you negative 3? Positive 3. Right? So here you really have to know your multiplication. 3 times negative a is negative 3. 3 times positive 2 is positive 6. And then you have negative 3. But you don't have anything else to drop down. Right? So you have a remainder of negative 3. Does that make sense? So for right now, what we're going to do, uh, it does need a little bit of simplification, but um, I, I really don't want to confuse you with the simplification other that uh, I really want you to just know the process. Negative A plus 3 minus um, 3 over negative A plus 2. Does that make sense? So just like we used to uh, with synthetic division, we just put the, the original divisor underneath the remainder. Okay? Okay. Any questions so far? All right. I want you to try one on your own, and then we will be finished. So... So here you have x squared minus 2x minus 15 over x minus 5. So try this one on your own. Let's try this one again. So here what I get, I need to understand what times this gives me this right here. So what times this first thing right here gives me the first thing that's right here. So x gives me that. So x times x is x squared. And then I do a distributive property kind of deal x times x, x times negative 5. So I do a minus 5x. And here I subtract. So negative 2 minus negative 5 is positive 3x. If I do this correctly, this stuff cancels out every time. So really, I don't even have to write down anything. Does that make sense? And then I have minus 15. From here, you should already notice that you probably did it right if you have this. Why should you notice that? Because this is 3 times this. This is 3 times that, right? So I add 3 to this, and I get 3 times x is 3x. Three, 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. I subtract and get a remainder of 0. So my answer here is x plus 3. So I do actually get answers. You want to make sure you're writing your answer, excuse me, not just leaving it up there just thinking that you have it. Does that make sense? And that's all.